So what I mean to say is, uh, so the discipline evolved like this, politics and political science. Politics are something which is dealing with the so-called city-state and it is a systematic study of that city-state. So it started in Greece because the people of the Greece, they started discussing about how this uh, state is formed, what are the various players who are playing a very crucial role in organizing this state, what are the elements which are playing crucial roles such as the institutions and how they are being governed, whether the institutions are functioning properly, whether they have some loopholes. They are the first ones to study about all these type of things and then the subject of politics has evolved from that term called city-state. Right. And in Greece, it was one person called Aristotle. He is known as father of political science because Aristotle started systematically analyzing this politics, not only of his state that is called Greece, but he has studied about the political analysis or he has studied about the institutions and processes of erstwhile city-states, not only from Greece, but whatever the countries that were present by that point of time, he studied almost all those constitutions. Almost he has read 150 city-states and he has framed which one is the best, which one is uh, having some loopholes. That is why Aristotle is known as father of political science. He is known as father of political science. Why he is known as father of political science? The reason is this. Political science because he is the one who has done that scientific analysis or systematic analysis. As a result, he was known as political science. But until that point of time, it was just in a theoretical mode. Theoretical mode. Hence, Plato is known as the father of political theory. Whereas, Plato studied about just theories. He didn't concretize his ideas. But Aristotle has done it and Aristotle is called as the father of political science. There was one famous thinker called Barker. Barker. He said that political science is not just a sub branch of social science, but it is a master science. What do you mean by master science? This is the big theme under which other disciplines evolve over a period of time. So he said that it is the political science which will determine all other disciplines in social science. What do that mean? So Barker famously said this quotation saying that. Political science acts as architectonic in nature or architectonic. Architectonic means arch. It will be like an arch. And all the other disciplines will be a subcomponent of this arch. So the, as we move inside the arch, there will be some subdisciplines. So he has given that political science is a master science. Master science means social science. In that social science, it is the best science. And all the other disciplines of social science are going to be a part and parcel of your political science. How that is said by Barker. Now, Barker is of the opinion that whatever of the other social sciences are present, take for example, society, take for example, economy, take for example, history, take for example, public administration. All these are the disciplines inside social science. But what Barker is saying is, your society is being organized by political dimensions. Your history is being formed because of the political systems that has been formed. Say, for example, history is nothing about the study of politics, how the politics was there during the times of Guptas, how it was there during the Kupta of Maudryas, how it was there during the times of the so-called medieval Indian rulers or the colonial rulers. So once it is in history, what do you do? You study the political nature of that society. Right. So he said that even history should be a subcomponent of political science, even society should be a subcomponent of political science. He also said that not only this, even subjects like economy, they are also a part and parcel of your politics. The reason is the economy is always driven by the policies which are being made by the politicians or by, by made by those who are in power. As a result, he said that all the other branches of social science are sub branches of political science. So. He is of the opinion or he has given that. Don't consider that political science is just like any other social science. But it has have it is having its own relevance. Unlike other social sciences such as history, geography, ecology. Ecology is pure science. History, geography, economy. Right. All these 
psychology, public administration, all these are subcomponents of your politics. Sociology, he is also saying that sociology is also a sub branch of politics because society derives its values from politics. Right, this is what his uh, nature is. As a result, he said that political science is master science. In order to understand this, what is master science, you should know what is science, what is social science, right? So under the social science discipline, political science is a master science and it is architectonic in nature. This is what Barker, Barker has commented. So just remember this, what Barker has said, political science is a master science and it is architectonic in nature. Did you understand what is politics? Politics is the study or a systematic study of city-state. In the city-state, what you study? You study about those institutions, you study about those processes, you study about those persons who are framing that institutions, right? All this you study as the systematic study was done by Aristotle, he is known as father of political science. Sir, how? Geography comes under social science. See, geography, he said that society is something which is playing a crucial role up to some area. Say, for example, geography. People living in a particular domain, people who are living to the so called north of Himalayas, beyond these Himalayas, they consider themselves as a separate entity. They separate, consider themselves as a separate entity. Why it is called social science? Say for example, why you consider Andhra Pradesh only to this geography? Because they are people who are speaking uh, one type of language. As a result, they formed one political administration. The people who are located in a particular area, say for example, to the south of Himalayas, right from south of Himalayas to the Indian Ocean. Why you call them as Indians? Because they had developed this feeling that we our borders are here as a result we have to consider this say for example if it is not for the sake of himalayas earlier we used to have uh, afghanistan earlier we used to have pakistan in our domains why you consider that as india because it is the intermixing of the people who thought that okay as long as the people are accepting that yes this is my land this is we are together then that is going to be our geographical territory how the geographical territory is determined Geographical territory is determined by the emotional connection that you are going to have with your people. If it is uh, to the south of Himalayas, if everyone is feeling that we are together, we are one, then that becomes the Indian geography. Or else, even in Afghanistan, if there is a feeling that we are Indians, then Afghanistan also becomes a part and parcel of geography. Hence, the geographical limits are going to be determined by the emotions of the citizens. Hence. Geography forms a part of social science and this is where the concept of nation comes. Nation is beyond your geographical terrain. Nation is beyond your geographical terrain. What is nation? Nation is something called emotional feeling, emotional bond. Yes, as uh, even if I am staying in Canada, if I am thinking that I am an Indian, that is called an emotion and I feel that I am a national. If in Canada, if majority of the people are saying that we are Indians, then Canada has to say that you, this territory belongs to even India. Are you understanding? So this is the geography of a country is not exactly what is the geography as such. It is going to be determined by the emotions of the citizens. Right. That is called, that is why they make it as a part of geography. Have you observed NCRT books? 6th class, 7th class, 8th class geography books. What will be there in 6th class, 7th class geography books? They will say that 6th class geography, it will be a component of social science. 7th class geography, it will be a component of say, social science. Right. Uh, if you are from Andhra Pradesh, if you are not reading from NCRT, if you are from state, uh, uh, state subject or state, state level intermediate board, rather than studying in NCRT, if you are studying in state boards, then in that social book, if you do remember our 7th class, 8th class books, the social book contains history, one part, it contains geography, one part, it contains civics, it used to be the way in our state syllabus, but in NCRTs they have divided separately. Why they have covered geography, history, civics under social, 
because all these are subcomponents of social society did you get it did you remember when you are studying in your school up to 10th class if you are from state uh, board exam if you are from state board what constitutes your social social subject social subject contains one part contains history one part contains geography one part contains civics right why they have mixed three under social science because society or social influence is present on that that is the reason when you study this history when you study uh, politics when you study the so called geography in ncrts you'll find the same thing one minute i'll get the book See, look at this. NCRT books. This is science. This is pure science book. This is pure science, which includes physics, chemistry, biology. So, this study of systematic analysis. This is science, which means it deals with scientific analysis. What is you should have exact proofs in science, right? That is called pure science. These books are called pure science books. But when it comes to social science, this is not a pure science. You cannot have the facts. like gravity always acts towards the center of the earth that is a fact and that was beyond doubt right so that is science but in society or social conditions you cannot say that dhanujay will be always acting very cool right that is not a theory because that depends upon many external environments so something which cannot be always proven or they are called as social sciences now look at this in social science this is geography book right this is textbook in geography for class 10 but what they have given on the top they have given social science contemporary this is geography book but this is a component of social science look at class 6 this is another book this is a social science book which is dealing with social and political life this is ncert 6th class this is ncert 8th class geography polity and history book i do not have that history book now so history is also a component of that look at the history book it they will also say social science and then they will give history but when you go for uh, previous uh, books old ncrt they said that this is history old ncrt never maintained this as a separate discipline but if you look at new ncrts in the introduction itself whenever they are writing new ncrts teachers note they will say that we have removed civics and we made all of them as a part of political science or social science right they say that they are components of social science so in essence what i mean to say is social science has all these disciplines whereas pure science is a separate concept social science unlike pure science you cannot always have the so called proofs hence social science is very individual in its own domain the way to get the facts is quite challenging unlike your pure sciences that is what the thing is right this is what uh, social sciences so mass political science is a master science master science in the sense don't consider that as a part of your sub part of your social science but just like the social science political science is one big science where other components are derived from that so that is what barker says but not to go into that depth what is state what is nation i'll take this component when i am discussing about theories of state there is second chapter that is called theories of state i'll discuss that component there but for now you understand what is the so called politics what is the so called political science i hope you got the idea political science i said what is political theory under political science political theory is one branch in order to understand this i said what is theory 
and what is politics politics is the study of institutions study of processes study of the personalities who are going to uh, rule this or studying the how they are influencing the individual at large this is known as politics and as it is being discussed and as it is being discussed institutions process so who will be dealing all these things they will be dealt under one concept called state state is the one who will be controlling it hence we have to study about state that we'll study in the later part in politics in politics one more thing is after systematic analysis of institutions and processes they have come to one final conclusion that politics is more about the so called if you want to rule these institutions if you want to ensure that the process are going on there should be one important thing that should be present and that is called power so unless and until there is power you cannot have institutions to be governed there is nothing called processes because everyone starts breaking the processes hence politics is more related to power because the rest of the story of the institutions or the rest of the story of the system as such is depending on power if it is powerful if it is more powerful the institutions work in a very uh, systematic manner if there is no power that does not work in a systematic manner as a result politics is about the so called studying about power relations hence whatever we think i ask you this question when i ask you about politics i started this class saying that when i ask you a question about politics the first thing that you answer is politics is something which is related to politicians what politicians do they always look for grabbing up power right so politics has inherent meaning of power why it has inherent meaning of power because in this systematic study of the city states or in this systematic study of the institutions one thing is felt that any system has to run only with power hence how to capture that power how to maintain that power how to ensure that power is controlling or how that power is being organized this is all about politics or major portion of your politics is about how to catch that power hence politics is often related or often equated to power this is how the relationship has come politics equates to power this is a reason but in general politics is about studying the systems having said this let's move on to the so called uh, power uh, this is another component state is uh, second chapter you have power what is legitimacy you study under this concept of power not only this power is one component and whenever you are studying institutions whenever you are studying institutions you have to study what are the various types of institutions which are present in order to understand that institutions whenever you are studying the state itself you have to study how the state is being organized the state always organizes in the form of government there will be one government and government is the one which organizes the state if the state is the soul if the state is soul government is the body right so will be there and government will be the body which means in order to implement the state or in order to ensure that the state is functioning there should be one agency which will be working there and that working agent is called government hence when you study state you study the so called government now not only this why this government is there whenever you study about government institutions you have to study about certain concepts what are those concepts you study about power because politics is more about power not only this about power but how the power is being managed this gives rise to the so called other concepts if it is a democratic country then how the power is acquired hence the concepts will be about democracy it will be speaking about the rights of the citizens they will be speaking about equality they will be speaking about justice so all these concepts has emerged from political science or from politics over a period of time that is the reason if you look at the so called first uh, paper section a section a first paper is all about this right politics political theory is the first chapter the second chapter is about theories of state if you do remember now why state has come why the second chapter is about theories of state because politics is about something called power and that power is organized by an agency called state state is being organized by government and then what are the types of government you have democracy 
in order to understand that you have the next chapter as democracy whenever there is democracy there will be components of that that is called institutions right citizens are the elements of that hence you have to stem out what are those rights what are those justice what is equality and then it rise to power right and then slowly it will think about political thinkers now why political thinkers are important whenever we are studying systematically all these things institutions processes it depends upon the time and scale right politics is always contextual what do i mean by contextual it is always time dependent and space dependent whatever is politics which are present in ancient india might be different from medieval india from medieval india it might be different from modern india from modern india it might be different from contemporary india why that is different that is different because the situations of that time the situations of the history of that time plays a very crucial role in determining the politics of that time rather than this so whenever you are to study this political science you have to go through the lenses of backwards you cannot sit in 2021 and judge what has happened way back in 8th century bc it appears to be ridiculous because you cannot clearly say whether that is right or wrong for example you cannot sit today and say that nehru's foreign policy is a uh failure policy because nehru has done that foreign policy by being under that circumstance so whenever you are analyzing a person whenever you are analyzing a concept that has taken out you have to go back to that era you have to understand what were the situations which were present at that era and then you have to look whether that foreign policy is correct or not similarly politics is also this thing whenever you are studying about structures institutions processes you have to not judge from being in the contemporary world you have to go back to that period of time and see whether that system is exactly present for example slavery slavery used to be present in ancient greece it was present even in indian uh, society but now by sitting in 2021 if you analyze slavery then it appears to be uh, something dysfunctional or which is non uh, not a good thing but if you go back to that era if you sit at that domain and then if you analyze then slavery has its own utility by that point of time hence your views always changes now how this views have been changed it has been changed or how it has been studied it has been studied by the thinkers who are present at that point of time right thinkers who are present at every point of time in every domain in every era there will be some thinkers who will be coming out and who will be saying that okay this is how the system is being organized hence in order to understand the situation first what you have to understand is what is that person exactly speaking and then from that person you will come to know what exactly was the situation which was present at that point of time once you understand the situation which was present at that point of time we can evaluate what the person is saying and we can evaluate what are the other constitutions or what are the structures which are present at that point of time hence chapter 9 and chapter 10 gives about this thinkers particularly western political thinkers way back from plato aristotle right socrates all these person they have given their ideologies based upon the situations once you understand them you understand the context on which they are speaking once you understand the context the rest of the topics can be understood this is how the syllabus is being framed or this is what the conceptual theory is if you have not understood anything so far what i have said that is completely fine but what i mean to say let me give a quick revision to what i have said what i said is political science political theory and then i started discussing about what is theory and what is politics politics is the systematic study of the structures and institutions or the persons who are managing this city state city state is known as police in greece as a result that is called political theory over a period of time the notion of city state has changed for example after french revolution city states are no more we call them as nations nation states today the concept of nation state has emerged because of this so though the terms has changed the structures institutions and policies or processes are present even in this structures institutions and politics they are undergoing various changes but structure is present at that time institutions is present persons are present even today structure is present institutions are present persons are present but they might be present in different form say for example in olden days they may be monarchy but here they might be democracy but monarchy and democracy are a part of a structure structure is present but who what type of structure it is it is varying so we'll be studying these things so systematic study of these things is called politics
systematic study of these things is called politics how the structure is there how it is varying right now how to know that systematic study you can analyze or you can understand that systematic study through the lenses of thinkers or the thoughts which was provided by thinkers that is why thinkers are very important and when you when these thinkers have thought about this they have clearly found out that in this systematic study one thing is very clear what is that the entire structure is running on power hence the study about power as a result more or less politics is related to power but politics never end only in power politics is something beyond power what is that the concept such as democracy the concept such as equality the concept such as justice so these concepts do play a very crucial role in politics hence overall your section a paper 1 all the sub themes which are present under that all are components of the so called politics this is how the syllabus is being framed or this is called political theory and political science what is state what is nation i'll discuss when i am discussing the second chapter got it <clears throat> is it clear so far if you have any questions you can ask me or else i'll continue clear sir no like any theory i said the political science has evolved over a period of time it has become or it has its own turbulent times it has old golden days right what is that the political science has evolved with a stage that is in the first stage in the greece in the ancient greece it evolved or it is under the branch of ethics or philosophy ethics or philosophy there was politics was not considered separately rather it was considered as a part of philosophy as a sub branch of philosophy or a disciple of discipline of philosophy politics was studied right so the master science at that point of time used to be philosophy or ethics now why it was considered not considered as a separate thing rather why it was considered as a subset of philosophy because in the ancient greece there was thinkers like uh, socrates and plato who said that ethics and politics cannot be separated if you are in politics ethics is essential if you are ethical politics is essential so he is saying that ethics and politics cannot be very very indifferent they are rather overlapping what does that mean if you want to enjoy a good life right good life is in good political life in good political life is in good ethical life so they say that if the ultimate structure is functioning for the welfare of the citizen right whatever the structures that are present all these structures are present for the welfare of the citizen whenever they are working for the welfare of the citizen the persons who are working has to be ethical hence understanding this component of ethical ethicality is known as the branch of politics hence what they say is politics and ethics are indispensable rather they are uh not separate they are united guys are you able to follow is it uh, visible hello 